Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today we have non-probability sampling. Uh, last time we have uh, probability sampling, the concept explaining video. So, in non-probability sampling, uh, we have uh, four types basically. The first one is uh, our convenient sampling, then judgmental sampling then quota sampling and snowball sampling before moving to each technique uh, let me explain a little bit about the sampling what is the sample and what is the population so we know we have a bigger population this is a bigger population and from which we take a small sample for the convenience i mean for the ease of study because it's not practically possible to conduct a study in a bigger population so we want a sample which is almost like a population or which represents the population okay so in probability sampling we can say that the sample okay this sample is definitely a, a representative of this population because we are following simple random techniques okay so let it be the simple random technique alone or let it be a systematic sampling or a stratified sampling or multi-stage sampling classic sampling in all sampling technique we follow this simple random method so this simple random method is very powerful that it maintains the representativeness of the population for the sample so we can extrapolate the result what we get from the sample back to the population okay but when we uh, come to this non-probability sampling it doesn't have any such quality there is no random sampling uh, there is no uh, proper uh, uh, sample selection from the population so that uh, we cannot extrapolate the result back to the population to an extent but why we need to do non-probability sampling? Obviously because many times we will not be able to do a probability sampling because of many problems. So majority of the uh, sampling technique will be non-probability sampling. Okay. So probability sampling uh, can be done when we have a very small sample, when it is a small trial which involves some 20, 30, 50, population we can conduct a, a probability sampling technique but majority of the times we have to stick to non-probability sampling so we'll start one by one so the first one is convenient sampling okay so convenient sampling it is also known as accidental sampling or haphazard sampling uh, convenient sampling is uh, non-probability sampling where the members of the target population that meet certain practical criteria um, such as uh, ease of accessibility or geographical uh, proximity and uh, available at a given time or the willingness to participate which are included okay so it is also referred to the researching subjects of the population that are easily accessible to the researcher and sometimes it is also known as accidental why because elements may be selected in the sample simply as they just happen to be uh, situated spatially or administratively or near to where the researcher is conducting the data collection okay so suppose we want to conduct a study on dental students regarding anything suppose i stay uh, or i work in a college and i want to uh, conduct a study of dental students so what i do is i select students which are easily accessible to me that is my college i select students from my college but still there are many colleges present uh, outside my college that is within the district or within the state and within the country there are many colleges are present but i'm not going to pick students from any of those colleges but i just take students from my college 
because it is easily accessible it's very convenient for me okay so it is not at all a good sampling because it will not represent the target population that is the entire dental students of a district or a state okay i'll just give you an example okay this is a dental students from the district okay so we have many dental colleges here one two three four five six okay and i work here this is my college okay what i do is for my convenience i take students from only this college this will be my sample so what happens is all other colleges are left out so it will not represent the entire population or the target population if it is if it was like simple random sampling i'll be randomly picking two or three from this entire group so it maintains or it ensures the representativeness but this time we have no choice we are just conveniently selecting one which is very accessible or which is very near to the research that is convenient sampling okay so for convenient sampling actually there is no pre-planning is needed we just go to the place we just take as per the researchers convenient okay. so it can be used for quantitative and also qualitative study Next, we have a purposive or judgmental sampling. This is a different one. It depends on the investigator's judgment, the researcher's judgment. The investigator or the researcher is having certain thing in mind. Okay, as per the researcher's notion, his idea, he will select the sample. He will not take sample which is very near to or which is very accessible. But instead, he takes sample as per the knowledge as per the theory of uh, his objectives of his study so for example um, i'll give you an example that is uh, we want to study uh, regarding the quality of life of beggars in the district so what we do is we select three different cities okay so we select three different cities but our idea is to uh, we have many cities here okay many cities here so what we do is we select beggars of three different cities so we select from one from here one from here and one from here but we are selecting only beggars we are particularly going for beggars not which is very accessible or which is very nearby but instead since we are doing a research on beggars, we particularly select beggars from three different cities. That is as per the purpose or as per the judgment of uh, the investigator or researcher. So that was about purposive or judgmental sampling. Now we have uh, the third sampling which is quota sampling which is almost like our stratified sampling. Hope you remember this stratified sampling of our probability where we take quota okay so if it was a stratified sampling we have males here suppose males and females so what we do is we take uh, two or three uh, participants from males and females randomly but here what we do is we take quota or a particular percentage we take 50 percentage from male and 50 percentage from female so we have six members here so we take one two three without any random sampling we simply take one two three or sometimes one four six or one three five so it is 50 percentage of the homogeneous group since we have heterogeneous group this is a heterogeneous group because it consists of two homogeneous group so it became a heterogeneous group so we take quota from each homogeneous group okay each homogeneous group this is one homogeneous group this is another one so we take 50 percentage of 
males and 50 percentage of females and this is males and this is females and we get finally the sample six so it is not involving any random sampling it is just percentage from each homogeneous group now we have a very interesting sampling technique that is snowball sampling technique so this is, this is interesting because it comes from an idea of a snowball which is falling from the tip of the mountain to the bottom so when this snowball starting from the mountain the size will be small okay size is small then as it rolls over what it does is it collects snow so it collects sorry it collects snow it collects snow over the track okay from the track it starts collecting snow start collecting snow the snow will be attached to the outer surface and it increases its size it increases the size again it rolls down it starts collecting snow snow will be attached to the snow and it will increase the size and finally we get a very bigger snow this is what happens when we roll a small snow from the tip to the bottom so this theory we are going to apply in sampling so first we select one participant so this is usually done in a very secret groups like homosexuals sex workers smokers drinkers where people uh, is not ready to openly come and participate in a study they always have a hindrance to be part of the study but still they want to be a part of it but they don't want to disclose their identity they don't want to be known as a particular as with some particular characteristics like uh, being homosexual or being a sex worker or having a habit of uh, smoking or alcoholism so they want to be uh, in the study but they don't want to be known in the society so what they do is what the researcher does first the researcher identify one person or one homosexual somehow he identify then he explains the study to that particular person and then he asks the person okay so researcher asks the index person to refer some two or three other friends okay that is they are friends of this first person so he can refer or he can bring some two or three other person again from each person can again bring some two or three person so we cannot directly uh, go to this last end or the last layer because the participants itself bringing the participants into the study okay so similarly we ask the participants in each level to bring more participants okay that is how it works we cannot create a bigger sample the samples themselves has to find and bring more samples so this is how snowball works as like this snowball starting from the mountain and it reaching to the bottom of the mountain from a smaller size to a bigger size so here also starting from a one person and reaching to a bigger sample by itself by the person himself or the persons themselves they collecting from their friends because we convince the first person so the first person convince the next two three persons and each person will convince another two or three persons and we finally bring the sample you wanted so this is how a uh, snowball sampling works so we discussed about snowball sampling this quota sampling uh, convenience sampling and uh, purposive or judgmental sampling okay so that was all about non-probability sampling. It is a weaker sampling compared to the probability sample. 
but uh, most of the cases we might uh, have no other options but choosing the non probability one hope you understood the small concept of this uh, non probability sampling i'll come up with another topic in the industry and more thank you